times, but I think it's working okay. And uh, I believe we should be good to get another week of... I'm actually really excited. Right. Really I'll excited. I'll give this to you so you're good at AFK and stuff. I don't know if we do that. Yeah. So let's, let's uh, let Under Jim do his thing. Uh, Under Jim's going to be going first, so we are going to cut out. Ooh, Hellboy. There you go. He's got, I didn't even know there was a gear for shirtless Hellboy, but it's here we go. Tail. Tail. Just a bun. I'll finish my uh, M&M by the time they start, don't worry. I'm going to go with my default Hellboy, which oh. I've not played. But anyway, this should be a, a really good one, because we have Undead Jim and Yamini. Uh, both of these players have actually had some pretty decent... Some pretty decent results in Europe during the IPS. Undead Jim was able to get himself top 8 at Versus Fighting, which was a premier event in the IPS. And Yamini was able to get top 8 at Viennality. Uh, funny enough, actually, uh, obviously not to throw Frank under the bus because we love him very much, but uh, Undead Jim and Yamini have both had a very prestigious result of being able to defeat Slayer in tournament. You know, they were both able to um, take out someone who was as much of a titan as Slayer is really impressive. And uh, they've continued to do well. Yamini is mostly known for, or pretty much exclusively known for his green arrow. And he has a really, really dangerous green arrow. Which is what we're kind of expecting to see today. Yamini had, um, uh, I suppose, a real breakout performance at Viennality this year. You know, no one really knew who he was competitively. Like, he, he was a name that people had seen around in ranked matches and, on, and in the world of online. It was Injustice 1. Um, but he just kind of just showed up to be an ality as someone that doesn't get to compete very often and, and had a really good showing for himself. He also beat Mads in that tournament as well. Like, he, he, he had a good showing. And uh, obviously that was at a time that Mads you know, was, was really finding his strength in the game too. And no doubt Mads would be just as strong now. He was still playing, but you know, who knows what the future holds. But for now, we're talking about Yamini versus Under Jim. Now, Under Jim has been playing a lot of Hellboy since he came out. Uh, and that's kind of the main reason we've, we, we we want him on this series because we know Under Jim is amazing, but I mean, there's the hundred different Batman players, right? And uh, once you've seen one Batman, it's very easy to say, well, you know, clearly the, the character's seen a lot of competitive play. Whereas Hellboy is the new Jazz, and we said to the guys, the brand new Jazz. Yes, and we're like, you know, does anyone want to play Hellboy for us? And Under Jim just nominated himself and volunteered immediately. He was like, yes, I've been playing this character, I've been having a lot of fun, and I'm going to play whoever you want to send at me. So here we are. But to be honest, I'm really excited. Um, this is going to be a very, you know, this is going to be day one, essentially day one character versus main since the game first came out. So there's going to be quite an obvious uphill battle for Under Jim in the fact that Hellboy is brand new. You know, there's no getting around that. So how he fares up against Yamini is going to be quite interesting. Uh, people have been really going in. You know, they've really been going in. On Hellboy. I've not seen DLC characters get fleshed out so quickly like Hellboy has. And a lot of that comes down to his natural kit. You know, the way this character, he's got that doomsday armor for his trait. The increased damage output. Really high practical damage. Amazing mobility with this leap that people are still trying to figure out the kinks for. But the thing is, he's got a really strong neutral. And that's what people are starting to really think. Is that this character has some of the best neutral in the game right now. Well, also, you... shout out to that shader. That yeah. green arrow shader is disgustingly is sick. sick. Uh, we're going to be seeing a few things here, I think. Uh, oh, that is so sick. Is. Oh, wow, and start things off with, I believe that's the 4 2 three. A really good mid-launching string that Hellboy has. But we're going to see a lot of, you know, of understandably unfamiliarity from Hellboy, I think, uh, from Yamini on the receiving end. But also under Jim, I think, considering this is a first to ten, Green Arrow is in himself a very awkward character to fight and approach as it is. Um, so I imagine we're going to see a lot of on-the-fly adaptation and basically how to play around. And the big thing is going to be that trait, that ability to absorb those hits and have that really odd hit stun effect that you could punish a lot of moves on hit with. Now I quite liked that initial decision Undead Jim tried to make where he had the trait activated and he deliberately let himself get hit by the meter burn of that hurricane bow. Maybe trying to absorb it, but Yamini yeah, trying to go for a wake up and you know Green Arrow has really a multitude of wake up attacks. So when he's that wow. weak, it's really gonna be a mix up of what wake up attack he's gonna go for. Now I can imagine that the Savage Blast might beat that leap from Hellboy, but the, the actual like straight arrow is gonna lose to it clean. It's gonna be one of those reads of from full screen, Yamini's gonna go for airborne shots on a read of the leap, a ground shot, he thinks he's gonna try and you know maybe go for a crouch shot and retaliation. But the there robber. we go, there we go, the leap. But he cancelled it. You know, he cancelled. He cancelled the leap. It, probably expecting an anti-air attempt. We're going to be seeing that a lot, I think, throughout this first attempt. Oh, oh! immediate answer with that meter burn back three. And then Jim not pulling any punches whatsoever. 
And this by itself is where a lot of Hellboy's damage comes from. Yeah, that, that, that chunky bit of um, back three. It can confirm off a lot of different things. Obviously, it's got the unclashable stuff to it. And I actually didn't pop his trait there. Tried to, but wasn't quite able to. Kind of surprised that Undead Jim didn't pop his trait after that knockdown. Ooh, but the there. Cat's in the We're seeing some really dirty he stuff. He shot him point blank right in he the face. He did. He just shot him in the head. Actually does quite a lot of chip too by itself. And that was some recovery. That is gonna be a big punish from Yoni. And also the hitbox on the leap didn't look to be as big as maybe some of these moves have been in the past, where he'd, he'd only just jumped over it, but the leap still whiffed. Well, this is gonna be a guaranteed trait or clash win for Yamini, but it's gonna do less damage from the combo, what have I have no doubt. Oh, but going straight in with the slide. Yeah, and right there he was put in a situation where he couldn't really win. I mean he he opted not to spend any bar, and it makes sense. Uh, he, he was going to lose that uh, clash no matter what. So if he's going to lose the clash, he's going to take probably a little bit less damage than the combo would have done. Use the bar to maybe get something happening. Unfortunately, because he got knocked down, he didn't actually have the chance to get anything going. And that's going to be 1-0 uh, for Yamini so far. But I mean, you know, this is the first 10. If anything's to go by last week, there's uh, a lot of time left to make something happen. I mean, hot take and all that, but hot take. I am... I am kind of expecting Under Jim to lose this. Not because uh, I, I don't think Under Jim is a bad player in any way, but I think you, you cannot overlook the fact that Hellboy literally just came out, right? He is a few days old, if that. Yamini's been playing Green Arrow for years, if you go back to Injustice 1, and I have no doubt that Under Jim will adapt and learn, but I kind of, I see him losing a bunch of games earlier on, getting some later on in the set, and then maybe having it a bit too difficult to bring it back. I'd like to be wrong, because I'd like to see as much Hellboy as possible here, but I mean, I think this is just going to be a match of familiarity versus new character, right? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, hopefully we haven't sort of... Uh, what we didn't want to do was almost, like, put under Jim under the bus. Uh, we just know that he's been really enjoying the character. And we're like, well, let's see what the character has. You know, so early. But he's doing well so far. He's playing that long-range that long range game. He's trying to get those individual hits. And it's the maneuverability. You know, you would look at Hellboy and maybe expect him to be, like, a sluggish or slow character. But this character's got some fast buttons. He's got some decent strings. And he's got some really good jump-ins. It leads into that full screen leap, but not going into uh, the cancel for the jump in. Popping his trait. Oh wow, big radius on that punch too. But Yamani, he's not going to go for a wake up attack right there. You know, he did manage to wait out a little bit, gets that down one check, drops the combo. So he's going to give Undead Jim a little bit of breathing space. Oh, and again, Yamani, I'm not sure if that was an impact arrow going for the up arrow, but a big shot coming out from Undead Jim. I like the way he's, he's reading a Savage Blast when he does that. The Savage Blast is losing to it every time. Counts on that leap, that mobility, coming through to good use. Oh wow, gets hit clean, but doesn't confirm. Yeah, was probably expecting it to just get blocked right there. Um, we've seen him use a couple of leaps right here, but he's not going for it all the time. And he's really looking on, oh, there you go. He was waiting yep. for that. Hellboy's anti-air grab is, I think, the fastest air grab in the game, and it does bag a full combo on meter burn. I'm pretty sure it's it's one of those six frame command grabs. It's one of those really fast, like you are not leaving the ground against him kind of thing. Which, Which yeah. I think that's what it should be, right? That's exactly what that move's designed to do. And especially considering his launches, if you spend the bar, like that is absolute denial. Now, the health of death, unfortunately, whiffs the charge. Like, it's going to get down one. Punish clean, really. you got to watch out with that leap. It's not the first time that's happened, either. You know, when you go for that that, that, that cancel, it seems like there is some recovery when he lands. And yeah, when he's ready for it. But I, I suppose at this point, it's on the undead gym to start committing to some attacks from that leap. So he's not just going to be content sitting there and blocking. Oh, he got the launch. I could have got more of that, but just missed the link. But he's winning in this one at least though, he has to be able to life flop and Yamani, although he's evening things oh! out, used a lot of meter to do so, and Undead yeah, Jim is probably going to happily burn his only bar to do some now, damage here. Now, well, if Undead Jim spends his bar here, he is! He's going to send Yamani full screen, and now Undead Jim, he's going to play the ranged game. This was 100% the objective! Is he going to get one more hit? Where to read? Low arrow will go under the shot. Yeah, he's holding it. And there's a block. Yamani's in trouble now, he doesn't really have Wow, it worked! Oh no, just built the bar! I can't believe that worked! Undead Jim was waiting for that too! There's Mr. Arrow, Mia burns a shot, and there's the throw. Not going to do quite enough, but Under Jim is going to be very low after this. Oh, and tries to go for the shoulder, but no. The Savage Blast, good read from Yamini. You're putting himself in that range that it was a bit safer. Savage Blast, just in case, even if he didn't wake up with the shoulder, was still going to be safe anyway. And uh, just really good spacing from Yamini at the end there. But you can two close games. Yeah, you, you can see what Undead Jim tried to do. You know, essentially what he tried to do at the end there was um, he'd, he'd spent his only bar of meter on the clash to do the damage to knock Yamini full screen. And while he was going to be full screen, use that distance, to then play the range game. But because it's Green Arrow, you know, he's got that low arrow shot. If there were any character in the game that kind of 
was totally fine fighting from that distance of that health, it's probably going to be Green Arrow among most of the characters. And I gotta say, that shader is so sick. I, I can't take my eyes. I'm a big fan of that <laughs> it's shader. It's so good. Imagine if Green Arrow actually had a hood, though. I, I am one of the guys that is like, give Green Arrow a hood back. I'm a big connoisseur for that. Turn him game. into Kong Jin, basically. I mean, why not? Or Green Arrow from Injustice 1. He looked right in that. Oh, wow. Big, big brave read from under Jim. Oh, that gunshot. One of the most satisfying specials I think I've seen in the game. Now, what, what one that Jim's going to have to start doing, really, is just start getting a little bit more damage for his confirms. Now, he's landing a lot of hits, but he's going into strings that, obviously, um, they, they can't lead into combos. And if they do, he's, he's not quite getting the meter burn to launch. There's the read on the... I mean, under Jim, he's reading the Savage Blast plenty of times, but you can tell he's not really maximizing his damage yet, because I assume the muscle memory just isn't quite there yet. It's not going to be when the character's only been out for a day, Ooh, right? Big read on the leap. That leap, even though it hits, like, by itself a single hit, that is a deceiving chunk of damage. Oh! 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 Chainmaker to the jaw! Get out of oh! here! Right in the face, right in the face. From door number one to door number two, we go flying back. Now, obviously, this is the post patch, so this is he's still the, alive. This is going to be the version of the game where all these, all these like orbs in the air, they're blockable now. So you're not going to have that advantage as a power character after that transition anymore. But now, Yemeni knows how to block them. At, at this health, Undead Jim is going to be just completely content, you know, because he's he's not going to worry about getting punished for those leaps or going in for those leaps when he's got the tray activated. The risk just becomes so much less. And now, oh my god, but there's the damage, right? That's the payoff. Because they're blockable now, they do a lot more damage if they connect. And Yamini, unfortunately, are being on the, 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 the blunt end of that. Oh, wake up, Leap. Got over the arrow, but didn't recover. I time. really feel like the uh, fire arrow with green arrow is kind of like a one-size-fits-all now. You know, where it's got... You can down one on block after it and still get the hurricane bow to launch. It's a really good projectile tool, zoning tool. It knocks down. Like, it really is the gift that keeps on giving. Now, one thing about this immediately, and I can I can already I can already sense the comments that are going to come up, and I'm going to put it as a disclaimer. I have no idea what the different Hellboy traits look like. I know what they're supposed to do, but I don't know the visual indicator for each one. So I can I can assume that Undead Jim's going to cycle between either damage upgrade or the armor one that he basically just sponges a load of hits. But I don't actually know what they look like in comparison to each other. Sorry guys, he's brand new, and to be honest, we haven't seen much of this character yet, so... That's kind of the point. Oh, cancelling the leap into a jump in, that's the stuff we're going to be seeing. Another even game though, Undead Jim does have the advantage of the clash available, but whether he'll get a chance to use it, I'm not sure if Yamini keeps playing this kind of like hit and run chipping style. But to be honest, it looks like Green Arrow is so small and Hellboy is so big that these projectiles, I mean, look, look at how consistently they just don't connect. You know, so Undead Jim, he's going to have to get in here. Is that the health regen one? I'm assuming it's damage. It's like a godly glow. Yeah. Oh dear. But that one, not quite as close, but Yamini playing it well. You know, when Yamini gets that health lead, he's content kind of sitting at that half screen and making himself as diff difficult to approach as possible. He's, he's managing to shut down the leap on reaction now, which I think is a big change. Because previously that was a way that Under Jim was getting a ton of damage. And he was managing to... I suppose keep himself kind of in that mid-screen game, but Yamini now playing around it super well. I feel like what Undead Jim's going to realize quite quickly is that you're only going to really be able to use your projectiles if you have the life lead in this situation. Um, oh, of course, the glow is the revive. I forgot when he's not that activated, if he takes a hit, he revives himself. I've actually never seen someone revive with it, though. So I've not seen that see either. So Hopefully we get to see it. Maybe we'll, we've got plenty of games to potentially see it. But I, I feel like if, if you've not got the life lead, there's no way Undead Jim is going to be able to play that, you know, use his projectiles to his advantage here because... It, it, a big part of it is coming down to height. You know, the height of that projectile versus Green Arrow's little hitbox. Looks like Green Arrow will quite consistently come off better in those trades. And here comes Yamini again, going in for the Shock Arrow. So he's going to get some kind of launch here. Obviously, the Shock Arrow allowing you to launch a little bit more consistently. And the reset attempt, I like that. Really nice sequence of pressure coming out from Yamini. Managing to recover in time, so it doesn't get launched. But under Jim, severely down on life. His blocks have been good, but... Oh, there's the interrupt in the gap he was looking for. So Undead Jim, he's got the right idea with the leaps, but he just doesn't quite have the spacing down yet. Yeah, and, and, and that, that just will come with time, you know, and like right there, but he cancelled it, you're probably expecting some kind of anti air. Unfortunately, that wasn't even a trade, you know, he died frames before his projectile connected. Gets the knockdown, but it's not going to be enough. Oh, that's no! That's really unfortunate, yeah, landing sucks. on the arrow like that. But that's not the first time that's happened either, that seems to be a big problem in the matchup. Now, speaking of the matchup, you know, this is going to be that matchup where Undead Jim, simply put, he just has to get in. He just needs to close in that space. He needs to make sure that he's got pressure. Unfortunately, building your pressure and building how to rush down with the character this early, it's going to be very difficult. But I feel like with the amount of games we have left, I think Undead Jim's going to get used to it. But Yamani undoubtedly looks a lot more comfortable so far. 
But and that makes sense. Yeah, when he's just making himself really hard to open up. Because under Jim, he's, he's getting a lot of kind of like wayward hits off the leaps and stuff, but he's not really getting anything on the ground where like, Yamini's open to being hit by that sort of max damage. Unfortunately, miss from under Jim. I think was, Yamini was caught airborne. Yep. All oh, but getting caught running away. And another miss from under Jim. I'm not sure if he's not close enough or if he's mistiming it, but that's two for two opportunities gone, and that's probably cost him the game. Yeah, it looked like both times he landed that launch, Yamini wasn't on the ground at the time. And if someone's airborne when you catch them, they naturally will not get knocked up as high as they normally do. Or even if it's not as high, it does tend to screw with the gravity a little bit, you know. Unfortunately for Jim, he landed those two hits, but he just couldn't get as much of a launch because Yamini was already in there. It definitely seems to be that, that kind of like awkward phase of learning a new character though, right? Where he's got the game plan, you, you, you can see the decisions he's making and understand it, but... You can tell, like, his fingers just aren't keeping up with his brain right now. Undead Jim plays on Hitbox as well, which is a really sort of, you know, one of those funky button pads. So playing new characters on that is going to be kind of strange. But to be honest with you, I feel like, you know, it's, one of, it's interesting to kind of see the learning progression so far. Yamini playing unbelievably well. He's, he's always had such a dangerous green arrow, and it's nice to see that he's still sort of continuing that trend. Oh, and there's an interruption, and I like the adjustment under Jim now realizing that the, the downward interrupt will leave Green Arrow airborne. He then went into the air grab instead for the combo. That was really good. Now he has got the advantage here. Oh, didn't spin the bar on No, I think he wants to keep Yamini in the corner. Yeah, but you need to take damage where you can when you mean... Corner pressure is good and all that, especially when you're trying to stop someone from running away, but... I think at this point you just need to make that life lead as big as possible, but... There's, there's reasons for both. And then Jim going in for that down one air grab, expecting the meat to burn Hurricane Bow, but Yamini, because he didn't actually go for it, he wasn't in the air after the down one. So no Ooh. combo, and that was just janky. Very nice. Go for the trade. But it is I the like one. it. Yes, Yamini's going to have to be very careful now. And I think and the Jim didn't quite have two bars for the uh, bounce cancel off that either. And he got the meter burn back three right as the trait ran out. Now under Jim. Nice, nice timing on the ground pound. Look like at meaty full screen really ground pound there. Oh lordy. But under Jim does still have him in the in the corner, so I'm understanding it now, if it makes sense. Oh! He's interactable. That one time use though, not gonna be there to save Yamini anymore, and he is still backed against the wall. Definitely. Oh, is that the armor one? Going in. Yep. It is. But it has run out, so he, didn't, he only managed to close in a little bit of space. The important thing, though, is that Yamini is still in the corner. But as long as there's this space, Yamini's gonna be totally comfortable from this range, but that is when the leap starts to come out. There's that down one on block or on block or hit. That's gonna work. It's gonna interrupt the gap. That's gonna punish the normal one. Oh, gotta watch out for that slide, of course. Going for the counter poke on that armor. But again, it's, it's proving to be a little bit too slow. Oh, nice down one and cross up, but meager damage for it. The thing about Green Arrow is he has always been historically very difficult to actually keep pinned down. He's one of the slipperiest characters in the game. Yeah, sure. definitely. Like, Especially when he's got bar. Like, Under Jim is just having such a hard time keeping Yamini in one place. Because, you know, he predicts one wake up attack and Yamini goes for another. Or, you know, vice versa the exact same way. He gets the down one, but he's got lots more work to do. Gets the overhead. Or, well, looks like an overhead, but it might not be. I like the slight delay before the meter burn as well. Just to make Yamini think. And there's Ooh. the cancel, but the throw tech. Yamini paying attention. This could be a good win for Ninja if you can get it, but jump straight on. But it's the normal arrows and the raw slide. It's going to do enough damage. Again, it's good that Under Jim is managing to close things up now. So he's the life is getting closer and closer for each loss. But he is five down now. You know, if, if, if he's going to try and, I suppose, really close in on this adjustment, he's got to do it sooner. Because remember my prediction earlier on, you know, I thought Under Jim was going to lose a lot of games early on, then maybe start to salvage some. But perhaps by then he's too many games down to ultimately win the set. I kind of, kind of want the, the uh, prediction to come true at the same time, but at the same time, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, as he loses game after game, it's obviously going to become just naturally so much harder uh, for him to make any kind of comeback on this. And we have seen some pretty miraculous comebacks last week with Gun Show and the like. But to be honest, I feel like what we are seeing here um, is what happens when players learn a new character. And, and to be honest with you, I think this is actually a really good lesson for those that... When you're learning a new oh, character, like when you're learning a new character and you feel a bit disheartened by the losses that you take, this happens to the best of us. Happens that happens to everyone. to everyone. It's a process that everyone goes through. Unfortunately, another miss on that combo by the gym. But there's the confirm, and it's the air tech. Yeah, I mean, he he couldn't commit to anything there because it was it was pretty clear that Yamini was going to air tech that. But it is getting the bar out of Yamini, who is now still back to the corner. But I mean, this is Green Arrow. Look at how much he's building. Under Jim sitting there blocking, but I believe they're blockable now. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I've not checked it since the patch. But I, mean, I know they changed some of them on Joker's Playground, but I don't know if it was literally every one of them. Because they were all unlockable before. Oh, tried to do something there, but unfortunately gets hit by the uh, Hurricane Bow instead. 
And, and it just goes back to this classic Yamani. He's going to play this ranged game. He's going to keep under Jim far away. He's popped his armor, and there's a confirm. This should be the round, even after the attack. That was so important for under Jim to get that bar out of Yamani. He got the life bar and two bars of meter from the attack. That was perfect for under Jim. But a raw jumping heavy. Ooh, raw sauce. That's going to do a lot of damage. Ooh. Ooh. Goes to the corner positioning, but mistimes it. Yeah, tries to go for a grab. I think because Yamini's been sitting there and blocking it the whole time, I think that's why Jim goes. You know, I want to start throwing out some grabs, but I mean, you just you just don't get standing grabs versus Green Arrow. Like at no point is he wanting to to stand there with two feet planted on the ground. That's gonna be a good clash for under Jim Logan to get a nice chunk of health back, but it's gonna put Yamini full screen again, where he's kind of been winning in these trades. Under Jim's been managing to keep up with a little bit of damage, but ultimately that the gunshot isn't really holding a candle to the multitude of options Yamini has from there. Oh. That's one grab, and unfortunately this health under Jim does not want to eat these grabs, but he gets hit by another one. That's likely to be the round unless he just makes magic happen, but Yamini's still with that clash available, it's shame to when be honest. When he hits that standing string, that standing mid, when he doesn't have two bars, his damage from it isn't quite as good. But there's the patience from Yamini, realizing he's got the resurrect, and he's just not wanting to press anything, but now he will. And that's going to be another notch on the board for Yamini, 6-0 now. Well, things are getting a bit more difficult right now. Six games down in quite a short space of time and under Jim with quite a mountain to climb uh, when it comes to the comeback that he's got to make. I, think, I kind of feel like your predictions might be right. You know, If under Jim starts to win some games, uh, the order is quite a tall one this far in a first attempt. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to analysis, what really is there to say? Uh, learning a new character is just difficult. When you go up against someone like Yamani, he's been playing Green Arrow since day one. Under Jim, he's doing the best he can, but I'd be really interested to see what the difference would be from Under Jim's Hellboy from now to a month's time. You know, it'd be quite interesting to see the contrast, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, they've still got time, but it's, it's, it's getting a bit more difficult. Everyone's favourite training stage. There's that nice, chunky background bounce in the background. Oh, and there's an ant. Yeah, it looks like Yamini's really working his way around that leap now. Yeah, and he's starting to not fear it either. Gonna use the background bounce for the hard knockdown, drops the combo, but... Even then, he still gets the hard knockdown on the background bounce, so it's not the end of the world, and he's still got that life lead laying on the pressure. Doesn't even need bar in this situation. But look at that meter build, though. Yamini has already spent, like, three bars in this game, at least, maybe two or three, perhaps, and he's already got one still sitting there, stopped, ready to go. The meter build is so crazy on Green Arrow. Going for those staggers. You know, he's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. Ending those strings just a little bit early. He's done a really good job of conditioning Under Jim to stop going for those meter burn back threes as well, though. Like, so many of them are blocked in time. Under Jim is not going for anymore. Hang on a minute. <laughs> right as I'm saying it, Under Jim does again. Spends another bar. There's a background bounce. Goes for the, the character power activation as well. Because he was using the hard knockdown of the background bounce to give him the trait, and then he was probably going to get some kind of setup. No, he's cancelling the leap. Oh, big range on that. Oh, and he gets the extra hit. And just like that. Very nice turnaround. It makes you wonder if that sort of short, short leap, you know, ending quite away in front of Yamini is almost the answer. Because Yamini is sitting there waiting to anti here, but that seems to hit at ranges that the bow isn't going to connect. Oh, but walks straight to another meter burn back three. Doesn't have the bar to extend the damage, but 460 for that is not a bad amount to take at all. Especially when oh, you've got the lead team. going in for the setup, hit confirming it into the upshot to get the restand. And for the first time in a while, this definitely could be under Jim's game. Maybe. Good blocks. His defense is showing. Ooh, and there's the mix-up. Low slide or overhead string finish. Oh, oh! There's a quick shot just to say, nope, gonna cut that slide short. Yeah, man, he's keeping things unclashable, but jumps himself straight into the corner. Oh no, under Jim can't get anything going. Walks into the hurricane bow, and the comeback is being made. Unfortunately, this has just fallen apart. No, the armor break! But the slide didn't connect. All in the tricky stuff, but no throw tech again. Is that gonna do enough? Oh, close. <gasps> oh dear. Oh, the dash up down one again. This seems to be, like, the cursed amount of health on the gym. Every time Yamini finds himself with, like, enough health that it kind of just covers his name on that second health bar, he just seems to be struggling to close it out. But, again, close. But close isn't cutting it anymore as we go seven games to zero. Jim definitely struggling Hellboy. to deal with this Green Arrow at the moment. Green Arrow. I mean, Green Arrow is quite a nuisance yeah, as, as a character. And, and to be fair, the patch has He's done... A very awkward character. The, the patch has addressed some of these top tiers. Some of them maybe gave him a hard time. Some of them he still, you know, did fine against beforehand. And some of these characters were adjusted. Green Arrow pretty much remaining the same. And if you're going to be a character like Green Arrow, uh, the rest of your competition being nerfed and you remaining where you are in, it, in itself is a buff, right? You know, where Green Arrow is a totally dangerous character in this game. And he has been for a while. Is that another anti yeah, with that down one on landing. Well, I guess it's a trip guard, but still kind of pointing in the same way. You get him that free combo. 
that Savage Blast. And the gem con just constantly trying to chase it down, but it just seems so awkward to approach. Now, even though he's going in for this armor, he's, he's just, all that he, damage. Yeah, he's taking the damage, and, and that really is the problem. Like, he's taking these hits, but he's getting nothing off the armor activating. And because of that, he's just taking the damage and he's not getting anything off it. So he may as well just be getting hit without trait. And Yamini yeah, I mean, only does have a massive life lead. Oh, just standing there. Not really sure what happened there, but... Oh, oh no! He the combo! And the gym can't afford to make mistakes like that. On that down one, beating that real late meaty mid. I'm never going to get tired of that revolver. Oh, and he drops it again! He's, it, Jim? he's actually dropped that every single time, unfortunately. I know that's the nature of playing a new character, but... Oh, he took two of those on the way in. Not terrible, though. He does have Yamini back to the wall, but Yamini, I mean, look at all that bar underneath him. He can get hit by anything right now and isn't going to care. Oh! Oh no, he tries to go for some kind of corner conversion. I have no doubt if he did that early enough, it probably would have worked, but... There's that sort of almost like corner corpse up I've heard about, where you can sort of re reverse your wake up by just dashing at your Doomsday style. And I mean, kind of forced to clash here, but not a great situation. Gonna eat a ton of damage here if Yamini wants to spend it. And even if he doesn't, I mean, he spends two, that's still gonna hurt a lot. And Yamini, he's gonna be able to save himself with the flash, or he can go for push block. Oh, this is Green Arrow. Another throw is going to connect. And now Yamini, two games away from taking this first to 10. I'm going to stand by it, you know. Um, we wanted to see some Hellboy in action. Uh, we're seeing elements of it. Now, we can watch Hellboy in action in training mode. We can watch setups and people labbing stuff and doing multiverse or whatever. But at the end of the day, I, I feel like this is becoming a very important thing for people to see is... Hellboy. This is the learning process of a new character. You know, even if this goes 10 to 0, um, it's an unfortunate result. But at the end of the day, with someone learning a brand new character against someone's day one main, this is to be expected. And I feel like it's really important that people see that it happens to everyone. You know, this is just part of the grind. Are these hard losses? Well, you know that Under Jim's not going to be too phased by this. You know, I mean, he's played thousands of games of Injustice 2 since it came out. This there you go. Be, there we go. Finally getting that now. What's the memory? And hopefully start to pay off. And there's a nice setup. Now, it's actually, considering he clearly has tech after the knockdown, he clearly has setups, it is all the more disappointing that he's been dropping it every time. Because clearly he has cool stuff after the combo lands, but just hasn't quite been able to hit, hit the combo first. But that's part of that learning process. Oh, wow, the second you get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the second you get that execution, you, know, you start to get that muscle memory. It allows you to get the damage. It allows you to get the setup. And these leap setups, you know, they're, they're going to become part of this character quite strongly. I think you can definitely see that happening. And the gym going in for the trait. Oh, a leap straight over. There's the blocks. It looks like that yeah, actually, is it this, that just absorbed the push block, by the way. Did you see that? I mean, it is Doomsday Trait. That's what it used to do. I wonder if he could punish the push block in that situation. There's that preemptive up arrow from Yamini. Didn't quite connect. And the gym now finds himself with a life lead. That's really important for him. That down one attempt from Yamini. Ooh. I like Yamini's approach, but under Jim, ooh, jumping straight into it. Plenty of work to do, but... I'll be honest, it kind of looks like um, Green Arrow doesn't have the hardest time zoning out Hellboy. I know he's got the leap, but because of how many airborne options Yamini has with the with the arrow itself, I can see him actually being able to zone out Hellboy quite well. I mean, we're definitely seeing the amount of damage that Under Jim is taking on his way in, but when he's got Yamini blocking, like he's, he's doing a good job of just keep, keeping the pressure on, but Yamini doesn't look too phased on the defense. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look how much meter he's building this entire time. Going in for those Savage Blasts, going in for those projectiles, and wow, the armor tries to go in for Unclashable, but unfortunately gets a bit of a strange bounce, so isn't able to get anything off that. Oh, wow. Just takes the full damage from that. Good block on the low, though, Yamini. Paying attention. The Ice Arrow completely absorbed. However, the trait has ran out now. Yamini has slightly less health, but with all of that meter and how much damage his arrow is going to do, and the luxury of a low arrow. Under Jim, he could still lose this round, and it just like that, it's uh -oh. disappeared. The life lead is now no longer his. He's got the fire arrows too. This is not a zoning wall that Under Jim can afford to take. There's the meat burn back three, but it blocks in time, and that's going to be unclashable. And Yamini now going up nine games to zero. But that was a much stronger start for Jim, at the very least. They're managing to start off with a good, strong lead and 
had elements of setup, but Yamini not falling for it. I feel like that straight shot was on prediction of a backdash after the forward three. Or the back three, wherever it was. Um, but unfortunately for Jim, Yamini is now only one game away. And uh, this is going to be that first series. But, you know, what we saw in that game was... What we can expect to see over time with Hellboy, and no, under Jim's Hellboy and other Hellboys where Parvit is getting that knockdown, cancelling into Leap, and he landed in front. I have no doubt we could have seen some kind of weird landing behind kind of mix-up, using the Leap to close in the space. It's going to be probably part of the setup game, but... Haven't really been able to see a huge amount of it, but there's always time. You know, as the game progresses, I'll be very interested to see how Hellboy pans out. Not sure what Jim was going for there. Look, he started up the back three, but didn't quite have the bar. Unless it was just a really hard read on the raw back three, but I can't imagine that was going to be a thing. Now, that looks weird. I'm sure that kick is supposed to be mid, but it keeps going over Yamini yeah, when he blocks it too close. It's going through him. I, I can't be going mad. Like that, that looks like it's going through him. Oh, tries to use a leap to get over, but he's a big boy. Oh, that was such a nice conversion. He's got the knowledge and he's going to push under Jim to the corner. But the wake up shoulder just to get himself a bit closer to mid screen. Yeah, I didn't think he was actually yep. close enough to follow up on that there, anyway. There was no way he was going to try and confirm that. Maybe the down one? No, he went for it this time. It looks like if you catch him airborne, it's a little bit harder to do, it seems. Yeah, that looks very strange. Gets the blast. Oh, wow. That was actually a surprisingly good life bar from Jim, considering he was down so much through it. Well, according to Twitch chat, that kick is a high. It looks like it shouldn't be a high at all. It's, Maybe, it's if, touching if it's, him. If it's a high, that's fine. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Match point. Yamini, though. One more round, and he's going to win this first to ten in very dominant fashion. There's the plus frames. Oh, we just go for the down one and the read from under Jim. The poke. Counter poke with the armored back three. This is going to do a chunk. Maybe not quite as much as a full combo, but it's going to cement that lead a bit more for Jim. The problem we've seen so far is that Jim, when he's got a lead, he's not really been able to sit on it very long. And there you go, Yamini's going to get one conversion. Actually goes in for the air shot just to get a little bit of extra damage, that optimization. And that, of course, is only going to happen when you've been playing Green Arrow for as long as Yamini has. It's that roll gun shot. Oh, wow. Just uh -oh. normal arrow anti-air. It's a little bit disheartening. He's got to watch out with that armor. He's still going to take full damage. And at this health, full damage is not what you want to take at all. Oh, but there's the leap clean over. Yamini has a lot of bar, but that's not going to be easy to clash. There he goes, just rolls straight under the interactable. And that's probably going to be a tied clash, do you think? Do you think Yamini's going to spend any? Oh, they're both. Yeah, they spend it, but at this range, it's going to be in the favor of Yamini. No! Gets the block in time! Oh, he tries to interrupt the gap, but mistimed it and got launched. Uh oh, this is going to be tough. <gasps> oh! Oh, he gets it! He gets a win on the board! Oh my word! Have we gone through the other end of the seesaw now? Uh, Is he gonna start narrowly winning instead? He's got a lot of work to do, but it's not gonna be a 10-0, and that's the important thing. Now you see, the, the demon on the left is the wake up savage blast, and the demon on the right is the wake up slide. And he's like, get out of here! I'm gonna get my ground pound and say no to the Lodius. Well, I mean, it's still gonna be difficult <laughs> for Jim, there's no getting around that. Still, though, not going down 10 zero. I think that leap was a good read, by the way, because if he went for a projectile again I mean, and they he, was, traded, he was chip damage away. I mean, if they traded if they traded low arrow, he was dead. That was 100% a read, and it did work out. So, Captain Colt with a nine-month resub. Thanks very much, man. Welcome back. Oh, that was really strange, but... Looks like Yamini actually has, it has no intention of even trying to add the other leap anymore, though. He seems to be content on just waiting for the block, because it doesn't look like he's struggling to, to react to the side it's going to land on. Yeah. He's not having a hard time blocking Hellboy, either, you know, so, like, speaking of blocking... Yeah. <laughs> Shout-out to the patch. <laughs> R.I.P. in pepperoni. Oh. Oh, God, that does God, the damage, damage Hellboy gets is so insane. Or repositioning. Yes, indeedy. Party time for Green Arrow. There's that plus frames. Oh, but they interrupt on the gap also. Oh, oh just no. out of range for the back three to connect. But again, the read was on point, but he was just a bit too far away. Like, I feel like under Jim, he's consistently getting these good reads, but he's not able to, to, to seal the deal, you know, get that finish. Well, speaking of finish, Yamini is on match point, set point now. Thank One you very bar. much. Thank you very much for the nine-month resub, Captain Co-op. Much appreciated and welcome back. Now, oh, this is uh, uh -oh. kind of oh. difficult. Kind of difficult for under Jim right now, yeah. He's totally fine getting those arrows, especially when he's got the health difference like this. He has to make sure he wins. So he tries to get a conversion, but you can see what he's trying to do, but the execution is letting him down. And again, that's going to be the nature of a 24-hour character. Still, though, it's 
very sad to see it though, when you, you know under Jim, like he went for the conversion, like Yamini should not have any of this life left, it should be over. There's the unclashable well, one, Jim. Yeah, I think it's over soon. It's I over. Think it, oh, hero. oh no! Oh, 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 he just donked him on the head thrice, and here we are. Poor old Hellboy. Now, unfortunately, well, congratulations to Yamani for taking this first attempt. Uh, Undead Jim. Clearly, there's just a lot more work to do with the character, you know. And this is not going to be one of those Undead Jim sucks, Hellboy sucks, bad, horrendous matchup. This is a 24 hour character, you know, we saw elements, we saw elements of how this character can work, but ultimately what we can learn today is there is still ways to go when learning a new character. Still though, it was a good showing. I, I think we saw some interesting stuff from, from Hellboy there. You know, we saw some cool combos and some interesting ideas. We saw the up. potential. You know, we yeah. saw the potential of the character, but at the end of the day, when when a character's brand new and your playtime with them is limited, the ideas will always be there. You know, you can always theorize what you want to do. But the only way to get that experience is by playing these real matches and by playing these longer sets, you know. And what we saw was someone learning a character against someone who's played since day one. It was a bit to be honest, it was more one sided than I thought it would be because there's always like the flip side of the opponent not being used to the matchup either because you know obviously who, who knows how to fight Hellboy let alone play as Hellboy so it's going to be one extreme or the other but clearly Yamini was just next level comfortable there. Well thank you very much Yamini congratulations. Cheers guys. And also thanks to both Yamini and Under Jim for, for playing for us today and hoping to just get back into the swing of things we're happy to be doing these again each week and hopefully we can continue to do so but that does mean we're going on to our second series of the night, and what exactly is that? This next series, uh, I'm going to type it out while, while you get this match set up. This next series is actually going to be...